I just bought an Asus ProArt laptop about a month ago. So I'm going to give an initial review of what I think of this machine for a machine learning workstation. I bought this machine primarily to record YouTube videos for my channel and also to take it up to Washington University to use it in class session. Just set it up on the instructor's area and walk through deep learning and the other things that we go through in my course uh, at Washington University. So for this computer, first of all, I want to state I spent $3,000 on it, US. I did not have this provided. I have no current direct connection with Asus. I did some research and found the computer that I decided I wanted to buy. So let me show you what I like about this computer and how it's fitting into what I use it for. Let's just jump right to the specs. This is the page on Asus where I registered it. And uh, obviously I have my serial number blocked out, but you can see the model number here. Looking at the specs, it is running Windows 11, and I'm going to keep Windows 11 on it. I'm not going to put Linux on even as a dual boot. I asked the community of my YouTube channel, really, what do you use for your daily work sort of computer? I personally use Mac a lot and Linux as well, particularly just for, for running and training models, not so, I'm not a Linux user for my day-to-day -day sort of work, but as you can see from the results, the majority use Windows. So I want to record the videos and show it in the operating system that most of you are working on. The reality is it's pretty similar between all of the platforms. So I'm gonna use WSL2 on this. WSL2 has come a long way and there's still some issues with it can't pin memory. That makes some things like StyleGAN 3 run really slow. But in general, WSL2 has come to the point that I can really actually use it for some things. I'll have separate WSL2 videos coming as well, beyond the installation ones that I've already put in. The processor is an Intel Core i9. This has 14 threads which I guess with hyper-threading gets up to 20, at least that's what it's reporting. We'll see that in a moment. The graphics, I tend to pick my GPU and build the rest of the machine around it. So I wanted a real honest to goodness CUDA compatible GPU on my demonstration laptop. So I chose the NVIDIA RTX A3000. I could have gotten a more advanced one than this that would have jacked the price up considerably. And I'm spending my own dollars on this. So this is, this is about where I wanted to keep it. And also I thought it'd be good to have a mid-range sort of GPU to try some of this stuff on right in Windows. So I've got 12 gigabytes. In most of my other videos where I talk about picking a GPU, I always say 12 is, 12 is the minimum you should get. So I'm, I'm eating my own dog food here and, and following my own advice. If this was my primary workstation computer, I, I would have probably maxed that out. And I would have probably pushed the price of this laptop to around $5,000 to $6,000. Now the display, the display on this machine is fantastic. It's 4K, that was a requirement for me. I wanted to be recording in 4K because often I like to zoom in on what I'm doing and that way it won't pixelate if I'm as bad. I do put my videos out in 4K. So 4K was absolutely a requirement. This is what brought me away from some of the Linux machines I was looking at, like System76 and Lambda Labs. Both were somewhat, somewhat tempting to me there. But I wanted the 4K, and really I record in Windows. It's, it's just the, the easiest way to do that. I would probably share the screen of my Linux computer sitting behind me if I were to record it. Memory. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM on this, so it's two 16 gigabyte SIMs, which means I'd probably be throwing it all away if I want to upgrade, but I'm, I'm gonna keep it at 32. The storage, there are two slots on this motherboard, apparently, for M M2 NVMe fixed drives, uh, SSDs. And I have a two gigabyte one in there. It's, it's not too, so this is not describing my system exactly. 
If I were decking this out for my primary computer, I would definitely get two, two SSDs. Another thing I'll say too that I like to do, I don't like the two SSDs to necessarily be twins, unless I'm doing RAID, which I rarely do. Usually I will want the, I will want them different so I can tell them apart when I'm disk partitioning. I have, I, I had two two terabyte ones on my other computer and I've nuked the wrong, the wrong one several times. So I would probably get one slightly bigger than the other, just, just to tell them apart. The I.O. ports on this thing is great. It's, it, it's, a, it's a bigger computer. It's not crazy heavy. I mean, I have used some computer laptops with higher end GPUs in it, and it's, it's a portable workstation. I mean, it's, they're heavy. I don't mind tossing this thing into my backpack or running around the campus with it. Not a, not a big deal. Also, it does have a charging brick for it that has a proprietary interface. I think it's 250 watts or so, 240 watts. So that's, that's a bit out of what you'll see for Thunderbolt type charging like I do on the Mac, but I can charge this thing with a Mac power adapter. It complains about it and tells me that I should use the, the, the brick that came with it, and it charges maybe a little bit slower with, with 120 watt or so Mac type power adapter, but I love the flexibility that I can charge it up on, on this thing or on the go. Like if I'm gonna travel, I'm not gonna bring this along. I'm going to bring a USB 3 so that I can use the same adapter to charge cell phones, to charge all, all kinds of things, in addition to the laptop. It has ethernet, can be plugged directly into it. I use the two terabyte hard drive on this to th pull things down from my SAN that I have in the house. I have my house wired for ethernet in the, in the rooms where I need the, the higher capacity and for multiple Wi-Fi points. So that's, that's nice. I like being able to do that without an adapter. It's also got an HDMI port in there, which is awesome for plugging in at the campus. It's got a built-in camera. I'm not using it right now. Let me show you what that looks like on Zoom. And just for comparison, this is what a Zoom recording looks like using the ASUS internal camera and internal microphone, both. Obviously not as good as the better audio AV equipment that I use for YouTube. The battery, I have not tested the battery. I've gone, I've gone probably a couple of hours with the battery, but I have not specifically tested. I tend to be beating up on the battery pretty bad when I'm using it on battery. So I, I don't get too hung up on battery. If I want to cross the Atlantic Ocean on a plane and have laptop the whole time, I'm, I'm gonna use my, my M1 Mac most likely for that. But this computer, I'm not using it as my primary computer, but it, it really could. I would have probably gotten a, a bigger GPU and 64 of RAM if I was using it as my primary. I do like the system RAM of the computer to always have twice what the GPU is. So I have 12 GB on the G GPU, so I want at least 24. So 32 works quite well. And the OLED on this display is, is, is spectacular. Macs have not jumped into OLED yet, and looking at these two next to each other, it makes the, it makes the Mac look washed out by, by comparison. So if we go into, so if we go into performance on Windows, you can see the CPU that it has. You can see my 14 physical cores and 20 logical processors. The L1 through 3 cache is also displayed for that particular processor. If we look at the memory, you can see I've got the 32 gigabytes of RAM, and you can certainly see, see all of it uh, basically right there. I have a single disk. I would have probably done that a little different if I was specking this out. Like I said, for my main computer, I would have two of these just so that I could have two operating systems. I really don't like cohabitating Linux and Windows, but I'm really gonna try to keep this machine pure Windows. You can see my wired ethernet connection right here. And then notice this, this is interesting. There's two GPUs. GPU zero is an Intel Iris Xe graphics, which is probably a fine GPU. 
kind of worthless for the types of machine learning that I do because I need CUDA. But then here's my CUDA GPU. So this, this one you can see by the chart, it's the one running the graphics. And GPU one is the higher end NVIDIA CUDA compatible GPU. You can see that it's running here. Now, if I start running my class examples on it, which is what I normally do, this, this, this spikes up. Let me know in the comments, would you like me to do some benchmarking specifically around an A3000? Is that a GPU that you're interested in? Anybody else have an A3000? This is Ampere line. Uh, let, let me know. I'm curious. I have not beat the heck out of this GPU. It, it's compatible. It works great under WSL2 and even straight in Windows native, although it's not like you're doing Windows native on... Tensor flow anymore. Only can do that on PyTorch. If you go specifically onto the GPUs, that's the GUI, the one driving my display. This is the CUDA one, but I'll go into WSL2 and now I'm there. And you can do the NVIDIA SMI. And you can see it's recognizing my GPU. I have that all set up. And there's nothing running on the on the CUDA GPU right now. So this is this is what it typically looks like when you have a dedicated CUDA GPU not running the display. And you can see that it does tell you how much total the GPU is using memory, but if there were any processes running, it would not tell you that. I'll probably do another video just on how I specifically set up a Windows computer for machine learning. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in that. But anyway, that's my new computer. I really like it. Uh, I, I might get another Asus in, in the future. Thank you for watching the video and please like and subscribe.